With the Democratic race, Tucker Carlson's MSNBC senior campaign correspondent, and Linda Douglas is with the National Review. I've got to ask you this question about Hillary Clinton and what's going on right now. National it, Journal. National Journal. What did I say? National Review. I'm sorry. You know, I'm still thinking about Bill Buckley's funeral coming up. <laughs> let's let's talk about this. Uh, Hillary Clinton. Is she willing to fight this all the way to the finish because she really believes she has a shot, or is this scorched earth? She's going to make sure Barack Obama doesn't have a shot in November. How rough is she playing this? Well, what she said, clearly, about going to the Credentials Committee is playing about as rough as you can play because that takes it to the convention where a very emotional scene would unfold on live television. I mean, unlike Describe past... It. Well, I mean, it's worse. You know, think about past convention fights. Ted Kennedy, then President Jimmy Carter, 1980. People were very, very emotional. A lot of Democrats. Hands. went out and voted for uh, John Anderson after that right. was over. They were so angry. But this is about race, and this is about gender, and this is about personal identity, and certainly African Americans who believe that B Barack Obama has won. Those kinds of emotions okay. would be played out so on the So the New floor. York Daily News announces the day before the, the next day, Barack Obama, who goes into the convention ahead and elected delegates, loses because something called the Credentials Committee has met behind closed doors and has come to the floor with the announcement, guess what, we're giving it to the other candidate. I can imagine the newspapers of this country with the headlines. She is in full kamikaze mode. Do you see that fox bite? She means it. I think, though... Kamikaze meaning she's willing to destroy she herself is, or she everybody. She is willing to go all the way, whatever it takes. I, we've suspected this from the beginning. She's just proved it. I do think she has a legitimate argument, though. She's taking a ton of heat from everyone. Everyone has What's contemporary Hillary. Let's watch her argument. Now okay. you comment on it. Here's Hillary Clinton today on Fox. Wow. Alex, we have 10 contests ahead of us, plus, don't forget, Florida and Michigan. You know, I keep beating this drum. We cannot disenfranchise two of the most important states for Democrats, Florida and Michigan. I don't think we can win if we don't win Michigan and Florida. So you mean you can't win? I don't think a Democrat can you win. You mean in, in November? In November. And we are essentially saying to the voters, we, the Democratic Party, is saying to the voters, your votes don't count, we're not going to have a revote. you're out of luck. I don't think that the nominee of the party will be considered legitimate if we don't figure out how to count those votes for Michigan and Florida. In okay. other words, Barack Obama's not legitimate. She's legitimate because she's willing to forgive all the travesties of, the, of misbehavior by those states, give them back their delegates, and forget it all because that's what she will do to win. Well, but hold on. This is the Democratic Party that still feels the sting of 2000, the slogan, right. count every vote. The Clinton campaign, whatever its you know, disingenuousness, and has said, we'll pay for a new vote. You can vote. Well, and I, the Obama people were against it. What's their argument? Look, I'm not taking Hillary's no, the, side. Well, the, Florida, the, the Florida legislature refused okay, to hold but the, a vote. Oh, right, but the, and Michigan too, but the Obama people weren't, as far as I could tell, and I don't think they were, in favor of a re-vote. That's a right, very... Okay. So the point now is, should Barack Obama be punished as illegitimate because he didn't push for a revote. Hillary Clinton has said it's too late to have the revote. All we can do now is punish Barack Obama by giving the nomination to me. I agree with the argument she's making, but her bottom line is it's too late to vote. Give the nomination to well, me. They're, they're, I mean, clearly many in the party think there's got to be a negotiation between the two camps, and that's a legitimate way to settle this. And some divide them. What 50, is the solution? Is the Obama uh, solution some kind of allocation of the delegates? You talked to Chris Dodd, one of the top Democrats in the well, country. What's he say today? What Chris Dodd said today, he's a said chairman of the Banking Committee, big Obama supporter ran for president, uh, used to be the chairman of the Democratic Party, and he said that after the next three contests, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Indiana, the senior party officials, leaders of Congress, and the Democratic Party in April need to sit down with each other and pick a nominee. Who do we think has won at that point? Then he went quick to say One should do that, of course. Obama you, can deal with the, you can deal with Michigan and, and uh, Florida. But, but no, the minute you can do that, I say, now we will now allocate the delegates accordingly. But if Hillary Clinton wants to go all the way, and maybe she, you know, maybe she'll change her mind between here and then. But she can still make the argument that's a fundamentally undemocratic, small and big D system. So. Because you're basically saying it's an aristocracy. We're going to let the wise men decide. Why, her argument is going to be very simple. And you hear some of her surrogates making it now. Why not let all the Democrats vote? Because What's wrong you, with voting? If you have all the primaries and all the caucuses and have a re-vote in Florida and in Michigan, it's still highly implausible that the results will change. Yes, but it's possible. I'm not, look, I'm not defending her. I'm just saying she has a principle on her side. She does. Here's Hillary Clinton on Fox News again talking about how far she's willing to go to win this thing. We've been trying to support what's going on in Florida because the people there want their voices and votes to be heard. 
and again, you know, Senator Obama doesn't want to support that. But Michigan is really the clearest example of getting right up to the brink of doing the right thing and having Senator Obama say, no, I won't do it. And if he says, no, I won't do it, that leaves Michigan and Florida out, and does that leave you out? No, not at all, because we're going to make sure those votes get counted one way or another. How? Well, you know, that you can always go to the convention. That's what credential fights are for. You know, let's have the, let's have the Democratic Party go on record against seating the Michigan and Florida delegations three months before the general election. I don't think that will happen. So we're going to have a fight uh, the last week in August, mm -hmm. right on the eve of Labor Day, where a credentials committee comes out of nowhere and perhaps flips the results. But even if you do have that vote on the credentials, she's still short on delegates probably, which means she's willing to say, I'll win that credentials fight with my inside power. I think the Republicans, you read the Post, they're really going to nail this guy as a left winger. They really are, Chris. And I think doing that is an enormous grace gesture. Now, I, I want to ask you this, Mr. Speaker. You brought up the other night that this issue really for you comes down to honesty and the judgment of somebody that wants to be the President of the United States. Well, when you look at the polls, latest CBS News poll shows that among independent voters, John McCain now has a 10-point lead. But Barack Obama, among independents, just in, in the last week, had an 8-point lead. It is an 18-point swing. Can we, and other polls have similar numbers. It's a, a free fall. Can we interpret from that that people do not believe he's honest in his explanation? Goddamn America. A uh, typical white person. Goddamn America. A uh, typical white person. Goddamn America. What's going on in white America, U.S. of KKKA? Black men turning on black men. That is fighting the wrong enemy. 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 Anybody who is like an uncle. Uh, I can no more disown him than I can disown the black community. God damn America that's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America. God damn America. And I was thinking about a whole thing. I always think about those who need help. That's what this campaign is about. Uh, I won't wear that uh, pin on my chest. Instead, I'm going to try to tell the American people what I believe will make this country great. And, you know, hopefully, uh, that will be a testimony to my patriots. I think that we should call uh, a summit with Muslim leaders from around the world uh, to talk to them about their need to partner with us. You want to discuss this uh, with such uh, such eagerness? Uh, let's uh, listen to Senator John Kerry help out his friend Senator Barack Obama. And I think in the end, um, he has an ability to help us bridge the divide of religious extremism, to maybe even give power to moderate Islam, to be able to stand up against this radical misinterpretation of a legitimate religion. There are other issues out there. We pointed out and showed video last night of another spiritual advisor of him with equally divisive language. We haven't even begun to touch nationally a debate over his political pilgrimage to William Ayers, one of the heads of the Weather Underground that admitted to bombing our Pentagon. He hasn't dealt with that issue at this particular point. It seems to me that his judgment, his associations, is going to be a major factor and that we've only begun to touch the surface here and, and the believabil believability issue. I think the Republicans, you read the Post, they're really going to nail this guy as a left winger. They really are, Chris. And I think doing that is an enormous grace gesture. If the Democrats lose Michigan, they will lose the general election. But does anybody really think that people in Michigan, hard put as they are to deal with the economy up there, where they've been in a recession for years now, are going to vote to keep the current economic policies because they're mad at Howard Dean? Well, you know, people don't always <laughs> vote in their perceived economic interests. Yeah. But what do you do with someone like that, Hillary Clinton? Seriously, it's like, it's like your dad's advice when you're little. Don't ever fight someone who will go all the way. You know, someone who will just pull out a gun, someone who's just, who just doesn't care, for whom there is no logical end point. She's basically saying, I'll wreck the party, and I will. And she's just right in the camera like that. What do you do with someone like that? How do you stop that person? I know that phrase, but I can't repeat it. I know exactly yes. the phrase. And one thing that, that the Clinton campaign is very, very good at is they keep pressing an issue until it finally catches on. I mean, right now the rest of the country says, what is this you know about what? Michigan? I'm watching but they the keep polls pressing it.